Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about uniform circular motion. We have already learned a lot about speed and velocity. Speed is said to be the distance covered by the body per unit time and speed along with the direction of the body is termed as velocity. So whenever there is a change in either speed or the direction of the body, there will be a change in the velocity of the body. So whenever there is a change in either speed or direction of the body or both of them, we say that there will be a change in velocity of the body. Now let's say a body is moving in a rectangular path like this. The path A, B, C, D and back to A. Now here let's say the body is moving with a constant speed or we can say the velocity, magnitude of velocity is constant which I have taken as V throughout the path. But there, there has been a change in velocity due to the change in direction here. So at this point let's say at point B the, uh, the speed of the body was the same which was V but there was a change in direction at point B. So it has changed its direction at point B, again at point C and again at point D. So in all these three points, the value of the velocity has changed for the body, but there was no change in the speed of the body. Since there was a change in direction at these three points of the body, we say that there was a change in velocity. So here, the number of times the velocity has changed is 3 and along each of the sides of this rectangle the body had a different velocity like these are the velocities of the body along each of the sides of this rectangular path that is the velocity from a to b is v along ab the velocity from b to c is v along bc now here the phrases along ab along bc gives us the direction of the body that is uh, the body is moving from a if the body is moving from a to b then the velocity v is along a b and when it turns towards b c its velocity uh, i mean the direction of the velocity is from b to c so that's how the direction of the body has changed in this rectangular path three times now let's say we have increased the number of sides here that means let's say we have a path like this which is a hexagonal path and it has six sides in it. Now even here there was a change in the velocity of the body at certain points because of the change in direction of motion of the body. For example at point B there has been a change in velocity since the body has taken a turn and it has changed its direction. And the same thing happens at point C, D, E and F. So the number of times the velocity has changed in this case is 5 times. That is at points B, C, D, E and F. Now these are the velocities of the body along each of the sides of this path. Now suppose we again increase the number of sides of the path. Let's say we have an octagon. And again with a speed v that is constant but even in this case the velocity of the body has changed at almost all the points like b c d e f g and h because of the change in direction of motion of the body so the number of times the velocity has changed because of the direction of motion is seven times at the points B, C, D, E, F, G and H. Now these are the velocities of the velocities of the body along each of the sides of this octagonal path. Now let's say we, uh, we reduce the number of sides, we go on reducing the number of sides and what do you think will be the end point that we reach? It will obviously be a circular path because when we go on reducing the size of this uh, side then obviously the end point that we reach will be a single point itself and the collection of these points in such a pattern will form a circular path like this 
and since we saw that an in every side there was a separate velocity for the body or we can say on changing every side of the path there has been a change in velocity of the body so we can say that in this circular path there has been a change in the velocity of the body at every single point in this whole circular path so here since the speed was constant that was v but there was a change in velocity at every single point in the path of this body we say that the number of times the velocity has to change is infinite because there are infinitely many points on this circular path so the thing that we conclude from this big discussion is that the number of times the velocity has to change when a body is in circular motion is infinitely many times since at every point the velocity is changing because there is a change in direction so whenever a body is moving in such a circular path with a constant speed or with a constant magnitude of velocity we say that the body is in uniform circular motion so we can define uniform circular motion as if an object moves in a circular path with uniform speed its motion is called uniform circular motion so uh, when can we say that the body is in uniform circular motion the body has to have a constant speed and it must move in a circular path and in those cases we say that the body is undergoing a uniform circular motion now let us look at some examples of uniform circular motion here is the first example of a merry go round now we can see here that each of the unicorn is moving along a circular path with constant speed so this is an example of uniform circular motion similarly the blades of a fan also undergo a uniform circular motion and in the same way the giant wheel and the hands of a clock also are in uniform circular motion since the vel the velocity is changing at every single point and the speed is constant throughout this circular motion so do these were some of the examples of uniform circular motion now we know how to find out the velocity of a body which is moving in a, a path which is a linear path but in this case we have a path which is a circular path so let's see how to find the velocity in this kind of circular path now suppose we have a body which is uh, which has traveled in a circular path like this and the radius of this circular path is this that we have taken as r we know that the formula for velocity is v equals distance covered by time taken now here we need to figure out what is the distance covered by the body when it was linear we could easily measure what is the distance covered by the body but when it comes to a circular path we need to have a another formula for that now here it is clearly seen that the distance covered will be exactly equal to the circumference of the circle and we know that the circumference of the circle is given by a formula which is 2 pi r now if we substitute this formula of circumference into this formula then we will get the velocity of a body which is moving in a circular path so the velocity here is given by 2 pi r divided by time so with this we have come to the end of this video and i hope the concept of uniform circular motion was clear to you thanks for watching tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning